Hi guys, welcome to Piece of Code and welcome to this lecture. So we are going to continue with our uh, Java OCA Crash Course series, and we are going to continue from where we have left off. So we were covering variables and scopes, and this is the second video in that particular topic. So let's see what we are going to cover today. So we are going to see more on you know the variable scopes. We are going to understand uh, this topic in a really detailed manner. We are going to see some examples because a lot of questions actually. focus on this particular scopes and everything so we're going to see that and then we are going to see um, the ordering of elements in a class or a java file because that is also important the exam ex exam questions may try to trick you in this particular scenario so let's see some examples right so let me go back into my eclipse and uh, create a new class over here and i'm just going to name it as variables and scopes 2 and uh, i'll need a public static void main and uh, let us see an example over here so for example i take a um, method public void eat or something like that and i'm just going to say int uh, pieces of cheese or something like that right and i'm just going to say int bytes of cheese equals to 1 Now there are two local variables in this particular method. Bytes of cheese is declared inside the method. Okay, pieces of cheese is called a method parameter. It is also local to the method. Okay. Now both of these variables are said to have a scope local to the method. Right. This means they cannot be used outside the method. So both of these variables can only be used inside the method inside this pair of curly braces. Pretty easy to understand. Let us see another example. i'm going to make another method so public void example eat if hungry or something like that right uh, i really like food so i'm giving examples on this so <laughs> sorry boolean hungry or something like that okay now if i'm just going to say if hungry if hungry then it literally means that basically if hungry equals to equals to true okay so int bytes of cheese equals to 1 okay now if i just say sys out over here and i try to display this bytes of cheese so what happens over here is basically this bytes of cheese goes out of scope because this particular bytes of cheese is local to this if condition only so this pair of curly braces and this hungry uh, this is a method parameter is actually local to this whole method so it can be used anywhere so if i try to do this out over here and for example let's say do hungry try to print it then there is no error over here so basically what is happening bytes of cheese goes out of scope here right so that is the point now basically remember that blocks can contain other blocks and the smaller contained blocks can reference variables in the larger scope blocks but whatever variable you define inside that small blocks cannot be used outside of the block so what i'm trying to say is pretty simple let me give you another example so let me define a block over here so as i've already told you that you can define blocks anywhere so if i just say boolean any bit equals to true for example i do it like that and if i do sys out and if i just do hungry over here then it is fine because as this particular hungry lies outside of this block right which belongs to the entire method so we are able to use this variable inside this particular block but if i um, you try to use this teeny bit variable outside of this particular block then there will be a compilation issue that the variable cannot be resolved to a type because this one is local to this block only so that is that is how you need to understand um uh, scopes work like that and the exam may try to trick you in this particular scenario because they will be asking you questions like they will include some kind of random blocks uh, in inside your code like this 
and they will declare a variable like boolean yes equals to false so you may get confused sometimes because this kind of seems like a single line right so you will think that okay this is a statement and it is belonging to this entire method so if there is a sysout statement after that and it is trying to print this yes variable then you will think that okay it is possible but you need to pay attention to this block right over here okay so i hope that this particular uh, you know concept of local variables have uh, stuck to your mind and you will do accordingly in the exam now all that was for local variables uh, so luckily the rule for instance variables is very easy so basically instance variables which you declare at the class level so basically the instance variables are available as soon as they are defined and they last for the entire lifetime of the object itself okay now we also talked about class variables right which which start with a static keyword or static keyword right sorry it is also a little bit easier so they go into scope when declared like the other variables types however they stay in scope for the entire life of the program so to put in common terms or to put in simpler terms so if i just open my notepad and write something over here so local variables so the variables stay in scope of the particular block where it is declared okay instance variables they stay in scope till the object exist and class variables which are basically variables which start with the static keyword they stay in scope till the program ends so you can follow these three uh, basically rules regarding the um, you know scopes of the variables and you are good to go so if i take an example of for instance in the class variables let me create a class and name it as mouse something like that so let us create a class variable over here i'm just going to say static int max length equals to 5 <clears throat> and uh, let us declare so this is a class variable okay so as it is with the static keyword then we are going to say length int length and this is an instance variable right and then let us create a method public void grow okay and let us say it has int inches or something uh, some method parameter okay and for example let us write some code if length uh, is less than max length for example then we are just going to say int new size equals to length plus inches something like that and length equals to new size okay so in this class we have one class variable which is max length one instance variable which is length okay and two local variables which are inches and new size now max length is a class variable because it has the static keyword in its declaration okay max length goes into scope on this particular line okay pretty easy to understand because it is a class variable so it is it goes into scope where it is declared it stays in the scope until the program ends okay length goes into the scope on this particular line which is line number 5 in this case uh and it stays in the scope as long as this mouse object exists so whenever we are going to create an object of mouse for example i create the main method and i create the object of mouse 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 equals to new mouse so until this object is in the picture or until it is garbage collected or cleaned till that point this length will be in the scope so try to understand the difference between the scope of this class variable and the scope of this instance variable so this completely depends on the program that is running which is the class 
so as the class ends or the program run ends this will go out of scope this will remain until this object is in the picture okay i hope this is pretty easy to understand and regarding the local variables i think it is pretty much of clear this inches will stay in scope until this uh, method ends like this uh, curly braces under this curly braces it will stay in scope um then uh, this new size is just can be used inside this if block okay so i think that is all for the local variables so i hope you got all that and also don't worry about this if statement and uh, all these things because we're going to discuss that in greater detail in our conditionals uh, lecture okay this is just an example to show you how scopes work so remember these three rules local variables in scope from declaration to the end of the block instance variables in scope from declaration until the object is garbage collected and class variables in scope from declaration until the program ends all right so remember these three kind of golden rules and you are good to go okay so let us go back to another topic all right uh, that will be the last topic in this particular variables in scope uh, chapter so basically ordering elements of a class and uh, basically um let us discuss this now you have seen most of the common parts of a class let's take a look at this correct order you know to type them into a file because it is really really important now uh, comments can go anywhere in the code whenever you want to write comments you can write anywhere so there is no particular rule regarding comments so don't worry about that beyond that you need to memorize the rules in this particular table that i'm showing on the screen so package declaration should be the first line in the file okay import statements immediately after the package class declaration immediately after the import field declarations anywhere inside the class and method declarations anywhere inside the class let's see the few examples and uh, which can test you in this particular scenario let me go back to eclipse um let us create a new class over here and let me just create a new class and let, let me name it as meerkat or something like that and uh, so basically um so if there is a package associated to it so it will be the first line in this file so let us do one thing uh, let us create another package over here so i'm just going to create a package and i'm going to name it as structure okay and let me just create the meerkat class there okay so in this particular package i'm going to create a new class and i'm going to name it as meerkat so if you see over here package is the first line in the particular thing so that is the uh, first line in your particular java file okay then the import statement comes in for example you want to import java.util.star so it comes in next all right then basically your class declaration that is over here and if you want some methods or fields so double wait all right and uh, for example if you want a method public double get wait so it, it can be anywhere so your instance variables and your methods can be anywhere so let me just return the wait okay okay sorry the okay that is fine so so far so good so this is a common pattern that you should be familiar with but um, let's let's try this one mm, let's try another example so we are going to start with the package structure and um, then we are going to just say for example uh, a comment and we are going to say class meerkat over here so still i don't think there is any issue we can put comments anywhere and imports are optional right so if you are not using an import then that is fine let's take another example so in this case i'm just going to say import java.util.star and then package structure okay something like that and then if i do for example string name over here then doesn't compile over here doesn't compile over here doesn't compile over here sorry right because it doesn't follow the rules so there are two problems here one is that the package and import statement are reversed so it, this should go up to the top and then the import uh, import statement should come second 
um the both are optional package must come before import if present okay because as it is declared inside a package it should come first but if if it is not associated with the package then it is optional now fields cannot be declared outside a class simple as that now i want you to remember one acronym which is very very um handy in case you forget the rules that is basically known as pic okay um basically it stands for package import and class so if you remember this particular uh, acronym so you are good to go so you can just apply this acronym P pic package import class to any um, program that you see and you will be able to figure out if there is any issues with the ordering of the elements this is a very good rule that i like so i want to share it with you guys so please follow this rule and you are good to go and as we already know a file is also allowed to have neither class be public so basically you can only have one class one public class so you can have multiple classes but you can have only one public class i think we have already discussed that okay um i think that should uh, be it for today's lecture uh, we are done with this topic we are going to start with a new topic from the next lecture okay all right guys that's it from my side uh, till then uh, have a good day bye bye